recording made easy. So what's up everybody? This is Peter aka Kony Made Easy coming to you guys with your next OpenGL Made Easy tutorial. And in this tutorial we are going to be learning about uh, vertex shaders. So we're just going to be getting an introduction to them. We're not going to be learning about them in depth. Um, so if you're learning, if you're interested in this series, you've probably heard of shaders before. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you are intrigued on how shaders work and how to actually write uh, shaders. And so um, I've decided to address this early on to sort of alleviate your curiosity a bit and to show you that writing shaders aren't as complex as meets the eye. So as many of you probably know, um, in OpenGL 1 and OpenGL 2, uh, they used the, what was called the fixed function pipeline, which meant that it was easier to render 3D stuff on the screen. You didn't really need to know how the inner workings of the GPU worked. You just could render stuff and get stuff running relatively easily, but you had less flexibility that way. So with OpenGL 3 and up, they've switched to what is called the core profile. And with the core profile, you now have a lot more control and flexibility. But as with everything, as with more control uh, or with more flexibility requires more, you know, knowledge and it's, it's more complexity. And so now in order to build applications in OpenGL, you actually have to have a, a basic understanding of how the GPU works in order to actually get something rendered on the screen. So you can't render anything without understanding how the basics of the GPU work, as I stated. So uh, at the at the smallest level, uh, things the the graphics that we see on our screen are executed using what are called shader programs. So shaders are isolated programs that depending on what sh type of shader they are have a different purpose and as of making this tutorial there are three main shader types so there's vertex shaders there are ver uh, geometry shaders and uh, pixel or fragment shaders uh, the two most ones that you'll most likely be interacting with would be vertex shaders and fragment shaders or pixel shaders whichever one you want to call it so in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at into uh, vertex shaders, and then in the next tutorial, we'll be taking a quick introduction uh, into um, into fragment shaders. Now, the tu this tutorial isn't meant to show you advanced shader techniques. This tutorial is just to show you the purpose of the two main types of shaders, and then we can dive back into our code base and then sort of uh, implement the logic we need in order to. Uh, 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 build the link and then actually run shaders so whenever you got, whenever people think shaders they, they will see something like this so um, there might be some music that plays when I click this shader um, so sorry if it's loud um, but this shader is um, doing some vertex effects based on the sounds of the music and um, it, it looks like a pretty cool effect, right? And if I go back to the website um, and I click this one, I'm just going to pause it. And as you can see, you can see the code that is actually getting this to execute right here. And it's not a lot of code, but you see a lot of math and a lot of stuff. And when you actually look at the shader effect, it looks so complicated. And you might be thinking to yourself, how in the world do I do something like this? This is really cool, but I want to be able to do something like this myself. And the concept behind it is simple. Um, and so I'm going to show you how it actually works or what is actually going on under the hood. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to vertexshaderart.com and we're going to go to create. Whoa, that was really loud. I'm so sorry for that. Um, so when you click create new, it's probably going to, it's going to spawn something random. I always get a different one every single time I click create new. When you create, you click create new, um, sorry, that's my girlfriend. <laughs> um, so, um, 
yeah so when you get this you're going to what we want to do is we want to delete everything uh, except for uh, the main functions we want to delete everything else and if you take a look at GLSL it greatly resembles a C type language right so GLSL is the shader language that we use to actually write shaders for OpenGL and as you will see it resembles C uh, a lot but anyways um, to get into things so uh, first and foremost, well, before we even get started, we're going to click this UI button and we're going to click this right here. So this is going to allow our code to be on the left while we see our execution on the right. And what we're going to do is click this window looking icon and we're going to select the uh, uh, color and that's going to set the background. So we can see this is our scene on the right and on the left, uh, this is where we actually write our code. What we're going to do is we're going to set this to points. So basically, and we're going to set this to three. So as I was saying before, shaders are programs, right? So they're programs that are run on the GPU and they run for um, a certain amount of times based on what is actually supposed to execute. So for the vertex shader, the shader program that you actually run is going to execute for every single vertex that you pass to that shader so in this case we're passing in three vertices right so we just said we want to pass in three vertices and the type of draw call is going to be points right so we're saying we want to draw three vertices right so we can draw the three vertices right but OpenGL needs to know it needs to get it needs to be given a hint that okay with these vertices how do you want it to actually be drawn right we can plot points anywhere we want to plot them but after we plot the points, what do we want to do after the points are plotted? So we're just going to set it to points. So when we plot the points, the points are just going to remain as points and nothing special is going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do GL underscore point size. So this is a, a pre-built GLSL uh, variable and that allows you to set the size of your actual points. Um, the next thing we're going to do is a pre-built uh, variable for vertex shaders called gl underscore position. So this will set the position of the vertex. So as I was saying before, this runs for every single uh, vertice. So for vertex 1, this is going to set the position for every single vertex that actually runs. So in this case, we're going to do what's uh, vector 4. We're just going to say 0 0.0, 0 0.0 in the Y coordinate, in the Z coordinate, and 1.0 for the W. And we don't really care about the W for now. And then what we're going to do is, this is a, um, a variable unique to vertex shader art, but this V color will set the actual color for the, for the vertex. So we're just this takes a vector 4, so we're just going to set it to red. So 1.0 in the red channel. 0 in the green channel, 0 in the blue channel, and 1 in the alpha channel, and put a semicolon. And when we run this, voila, we get a point in the center of the screen. But, but even though you don't notice it, the three points are actually being drawn right now. But because we specify that we actually want to display three vertices, but all three points are being drawn at the exact same position. So basically, I want you to imagine this, imagine this, I guess, running in, say, um, a for loop of some sort, right? So it's saying that we want to draw three vertices. So it's, what it's going to do is going to run through the first iteration of the loop and it's going to say, okay, what is the position of this vertex? We want to set it at position 0, 0, 0. Okay, let's go to the second iteration of the for loop. What position do we want to draw that point at? Zero, zero, zero. And so all three points are drawn on top of each other right now, even though you're, you're unable to, to see that. Um, also, one thing to note, we're going we're gonna to address that problem in just a second, but one thing to note is that with uh, vertex shader art, uh, uh, we see that point zero, zero is in the center, negative one is to the left, positive one is to the right, and negative one on the Y is at the bottom, positive one is towards the top. Um, so what we're gonna do, just to show you that I'm not lying about the three points actually being drawn, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, let's create um, a vector two and let's just call it XY. 
So we're just going to create a vector two, and inside the vector two, uh, we're drawing. Uh, if we go to help, sorry, we can see that in the help menu they have uh, an input variable called vertex ID. So that will let you know which vertex is currently being drawn, right? So the first ID would be zero, second would be one, third one would be two. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say uh, vertex ID divided by I guess three. And we'll do that in both the X and the Y coordinates, um, like so. And the cool thing about this is we can just substitute, put in X, Y. So because X, Y is a vector two, it's going to take up the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So it's going to fill that in for us automatically in GLSL. So this is going to set the X position to vertex ID divided by 3.0 and set the Y position to vertex ID divided by 3.0 as outlined here. And as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, we can see the three points um, that we specified. So let's walk through what was actually going on in this code. So we basically said that this program is gonna run for every single vertice that we pass in. So we're passing in three vertices so we're saying okay well vertex id so we're drawing uh so for the first iteration vertex id is going to be set to zero so zero divided by three zero divided by three is going to be zero so it's going to draw it at point zero zero so that's how we get our position now it's going to run again but it's going to run again for the second vertex so the vertex id is set to one so one divided by three in the x coordinate one divided by three so that's going to set it to um, my math is um, 0 0.3 um, so that's going to draw that on both the x and the y coordinates and so on and so forth so that's how we get these staggered positions like so um, so yeah that's basically it so I didn't want to go in depth into how um, in depth into writing complex vertex shader logic I just want to show you that the whole purpose of a vertex shader is to just return the position so all the complex stuff that you see in vertex shaders and all that stuff the all those complex logics all the complex logic and all that stuff is doing is trying to calculate the position of that specific vertex and then when it finds out the position of that specific vertex, it, it outlines that. And then as you see, you see it there. Um, so that is, I don't know how much time I've been recording, but if it hasn't been too long, um, maybe we can do, no, it's only 12 minutes, but we can do a quick example, uh, another quick example um, to actually draw a triangle since I, oh, you know what, I'll copy some code that I have right here. Um, so I'm very very simple. It's not um, Coded well, but it's just to show you the basics of what's going on So I'm just going to do this and I'm going to set it to triangles So I want to explain um, walk you through what this code is actually doing so as you can see I've created a variable of a vector 2 called X and Y and I set the default to negative uh, 0.5 right and I said if the vertex ID is equal to 1 then I want to plot the um, the second point right so you know what let me stop it from actually um, doing the whole um, the whole movement so basically what I've said right here is let me change it back to point so I've said okay the first point I want it to be at negative 5 in the x-coordinate and 0 in the y-coordinate so this is uh, this point towards uh, the left right here and then I said a vertex ID is equal to 1 so once it runs again so if we loop this and we run again it's going to say, set vertex ID to 1 so then we're going to set x y equal to 0 in the x-coordinate and 0 0.5 in the y-coordinate so that's how we get this top part of the triangle and the same thing for this so we set the uh, the right part of the triangle right and that's all we did uh, that's all we've done then we've set the geo position to uh those coordinates so that's basically all we've done to get these three points right here and if i set the triangles this basically hints the gpu that hey okay you've got so it hints the gpu that um the type of drawing that we want to do so because we have three points and because we've set the type of um 
the, the type of draw called the triangles is going to render a triangle for us. Um, so that's how we get that. And then to get the movement that I got, basically what I did is that I took the sign of the time and the y coordinate. So if we go to help, we can see that they provided an input variable for us called time. So that will return the amount of time in, um, in seconds. So I just took the, t the sign of that. Um, which ends up giving us that nice smooth uh, animation that we see here in the in the y coordinate. So as you can see with the vertex shader, all we're doing is we're calculating the position. Everything that we do is calculating the position of the vertices, and that is it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this made sense to you. Um, we're going to be learning more about vertex shaders a lot more in depth, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to vertex shaders so that you guys could come to vertex shader art play around with it you know have some fun with actually creating your own vertex shaders and then as we learn more about it we'll be able to do a lot of the cooler vertex shader effects that we saw uh, earlier on in this, t in this tutorial so that's it for now don't forget to comment like and subscribe and bye for now